So today we're going to talk about some other Windows components. Uh, we've done graphics, we've shown you how to do a J-frame. Uh, we're going to show you how to do some labels and how to create buttons and events for buttons. Um, so just to review, J-frame. A J-frame is just the window um, that allows us to uh, create our window, I guess. Yeah, it's just a window. J-frame, another word for a window. Okay, now a J-panel is the place you put your components on. Now, when we're using a J-panel, we're going to say class, whatever we name our class, and then say extends J-panel because everything within our entire class is going to be components that we can put on our J-panel. You can use J-panels and other things. They're just little containers, so suppose you wanted to divide your window up into multiple containers, you could create more J-panels. To do that, you just say J-panel, whatever you want to name it, equals new J-panel, and that would create another J-panel that you could position things on your, on your window. Okay, a J-label is just a place that lets you put in static text. You can't, you can't, uh, the user can't come in and change that. It's just something to be displayed. To do a J label, you say J label and then name it whatever you like. I like to name all my components with a little three letter prefix to remind me what it is. So a label will be LBL, what have you. And then equals new J label and then in parentheses you put what the text you want to appear on your screen. Oh, weird. Anyway, so yeah, so these are J labels, and then this text would just be what's up here. Okay, next is a J button. J button is a button. Let's uh, call it J button because it's a button. Um, and then the same thing as a J label. Uh, the text that you put in as the formal parameter for the default constructor, that is what's going to appear on the button. Button. I uh, forgot about that animation. Okay, a J text field allows the user to enter in information. So they can go in and change this. Yes, that is the J text field. Um, if you want to have default text in there, you can. Or you can actually leave that blank and it would just be an empty text box. It would just be with nothing in it. Set panel items. What were we talking Oh, yeah. Okay. So one of the new commands that you're going to have to put in is this set layout null. Uh, Java has all of these different layouts that you can use to position things around um, on your screen so it works for lots of different formats. In this class I'm not going to go into the layouts I'm just going to show you one layout and that's absolute layout because that's kind of what you've been doing with the graphics and so it's it will be the simplest and easiest for you to learn. Plus that's why we did graphics is to show you how to do these layouts. You'll be like oh this makes total sense. Okay so you want set layout null. We're not using a layout. And then when you want to set the location of the labels and buttons and all of those things, you say set bounds. So you type the name of your component. Remember at some point we did J label LBL joke equals new J label. Now we're going to set the bounds of that label. And just like a rectangle when we did with the graphics, it's the X, Y, width, and height. The X and Y is the upper left corner of the box, and then the width of the box, and then the height of the box, and that will make our J label. So it's the same set bounds to change any component. So here's a button punchline, or a, J, a, a text field would be, work too. So it, this just sets where they're going to be positioned on the screen. In order for this to work, you do have to have this set layout null, otherwise it won't show up correctly. Okay, last, so we know we have to instantiate the object, we know we have to have a set layout, we know we have to set the bounds, and then the last thing you need to do to get your components to show up is you have to add them to your window with this add. And what it's doing is it's adding it to the J panel that remember we said extends J panel and our entire class is a J panel, a custom J panel. So we're just adding these components to the J panel. 
Okay, now some objects have an action listener. The only object that we're going to use in this class is a button. A button has an action listener because it's what happens when the user clicks the button. So because there is an event associated with a button, button you click it, right? It has this add action listener. And all this is doing is listening for some action to appear. Um, so in our case, our action is going to be associated and this right here is the name of the button, BTN punchline or BTN calculator, whatever you happen to name it when you instantiate it. Remember when you instantiate it's J button, BTN whatever equals new J button. Well then you'll associate this action listener with it. And this has to be exactly like this. Just go ahead and copy and paste from here all the way down to here because all of this is always going to be the same. The only thing you'll ever change out is the name of the button. And that will just, and it's this weird syntax. I mean, look at that. There's a bracket and a parenthesis and a semicolon. But it's, it's not too bad. Just make sure everything lines up. So here we've got a dot. Make sure there's an open, close, open. Here's the open parenthesis. The closing parenthesis is actually right here. So keep that in mind. It's just this weird syntax. Copy and paste it in. Okay, now once the user presses a button and we have some sort of event, maybe we want something to happen. So in this case, maybe they, why do computer programmers confuse Halloween and Christmas? They press the button to see the punchline. What we use is a set text. A set text it allows us to change the text that's already in the label. In this case, they're going to change it to the punchline of our cute little joke. Why do computer programmers confuse Halloween and Christmas? Because oct31 is decimal 25. Oh, I put that in. There it is, because oct31 is. So this allows us to change the text that's already in the label. The user can't but we can code it in there when they have the event. But because of this, this would probably happen on some sort of event. So it wouldn't just be this one little code hanging out there in no man's land. We would actually have that event code and that label whatever dot set text is going to be inside of those brackets. So that allows you to change the text of a label. Okay, now suppose you wanted to get some text from, the only thing you'd want to get text from was maybe your text field because that's what the user could type in. So in this case, this get text command, notice it's a getter. Interesting, we've learned about this already. Get text is actually a getter, but in this case it gets the text from the J text field. Um, so assuming that this is called txt binary, we would have txt binary dot get text. And what that would do is that would store whatever the user typed in into our string. Or whatever the user types in, yeah. Okay, now sometimes, if you'll notice back on this other slide, this is treated as text. And get text can only get text it can't get numbers so there's kind of a little workaround you have to do if the user's going to type in a number it's something you've actually already done before but here's kind of the reminder of what it is okay so if i want to convert it to an integer i here i have my txt my text box is called txt num so i have my txt num dot get text but then I have to convert it to an integer. Remember that integer dot parse int from maybe like three or four weeks back? Yeah, I know, I know. It's been a while. Um, but that will convert whatever the user types in into a number and store it into our variable num. Um, alternatively, if they will, you want them typing in a double, we can still use our get text. And by the way, that is spelled incorrectly because get text does have to have an open close parentheses. Just FYI. Um, so that get text is inside of a double dot parse double. So this takes the string that's in the text box, converts it to a double, and stores it into the variable. Once again, this would probably have to be in the event 
because you wouldn't want them to get the text at the start of the program because the user hasn't had a chance to enter anything in. That would probably be in your calculate button. Now this will make a lot more sense when you're actually doing it. So go ahead and, and start on the, 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 the no-brainer for today. I, I haven't quite... Um, um, and this will make a lot more sense after you actually do it. All right, good luck with that, and we'll see you in class.